The targets of the Tory leadership campaign have been grimly predictable. While Britain suffers a cost of living crisis, it's not inflation or poverty that gets attacked, but rather migrants and so-called woke culture. There is one victim of Tory ire that's been more curious, though. Solar farms. This was Liz Truss at a recent hustings. And I think one of the most depressing sights when you're driving through England is seeing fields that should be full of crops or livestock full of solar panels. That was Liz Truss explaining how she gets teary-eyed when confronted with renewables. And Rishi Sunak has also now got in on the Solar Bashing Act. He's written for The Telegraph. On my watch, we will not lose swathes of our best farmland to solar farms. Instead, we should be making sure that solar panels are installed on commercial buildings, on sheds and on properties. Likewise, we must protect our best farmland from rewilding, which should not take place at the expense of food production. Sunak clearly thinks this is a vote winner with Tory members, as the campaign put the quote out as a graphic. This is Rishi in front of a combine harvester pledging to defend fields from dastardly green energy. Now, it might not surprise you that this Tory crusade, like most of their others, is not grounded in reality. Britain currently has 23 million acres of farmland. Solar panels currently cover 0.03% of it. It's also the case that a solar farm doesn't even need to take farmland away from its traditional uses. So it has turned out, according to multiple trials around the world, that solar farms and sheep make a great combination. This is footage from a solar farm in Minnesota. The solar farm owners are using sheep to keep the grass short around their solar panels. Of course, you could also then shear the sheep, raise lambs, whatever else it is that sheep farmers do. Aaron, why do you think the Tories have, have really taken aim at, at green energy? It's not just actually solar farms. They've also said they will block onshore wind, lots of things that I don't think of as as an eyesore, there are much worse eyesores than a solar panel or a or or, or a wind turbine. But why is this the target they, they've chosen? Because they're committed to being pathologically stupid and wrong. That's the simple answer. <laughs> they are absolutely committed to doing the worst possible thing virtually all of the time. We're in an energy crisis, Michael. We're seeing our bills rise and rise and rise. We're going to see a massive increase in terms of heating our homes over the course of this winter. Now, electricity isn't about heating your home. I mean, probably at some point in the next 15, 20 years, it will be. But for now, it's not. But we surely, you would think, given what's happening in Ukraine and Russia, have a, have a reasonable discussion around energy security in this country. How can we become relatively independent in terms of energy generation in the United Kingdom? Good question, right? Well, I would presume it means not sort of depending on global supply chains of oil and gas. Now, some Tories would agree this. That's why we should start fracking instead. This is the commodity which is skyrocketing in price as a result of a war in the former Soviet Union. I was going to say Eastern Europe. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's the east of Eastern Europe. It's the furthest east of Europe you can go, you know, east of the Dnepr in Ukraine. Why the hell would you say we need to use more of the energy? You know, the energy thing that's just kind of gone up like a sort of a hockey stick in price. Let's use more of that. Oh, yeah. And the energy source like solar and wind, which has been getting cheaper literally every year since I was born. You know, solar energy has been getting cheaper every single year since it was first used on a NASA satellite in the mid 1950s. Right. It's been getting cheap, cheaper every single year, every single year. It will get cheaper every single year for the rest of our lives, Michael both solar and wind. And gas and, and oil, are, they fluctuate and they're subject to political volatility. And you're saying you care about energy independence, but you don't want solar and wind, you want oil and gas. It's because they're committed to being wrong. They're committed to being wrong. These are the last people you want running the country. These are the last people who are going to start solving problems, whether it's housing, energy, climate change, cost of living, public service. They're not going to solve anything because they're committed to being pathologically wrong whether that's dumping shit in our rivers and the seas, whether that's blaming Stalinist targeting for the, you know, why we've got no new houses and flats in this country, or, or whether it's deciding to build HS2, except for this little spur that would allow you to connect places like Manchester and Bradford. Okay, you will spend 100 billion, but we won't spend the extra 5 billion to reinvigorate the economy of this particular area, which has been left out of economic growth in this country for 40, 50 years. They're wrong about everything. 
They are wrong about everything. It's like, you know, one of those people, whatever they say, just do the opposite. It's a very good basis, by the way, if you want to start creating really smart, effective public policy solutions. Do the complete <laughs> opposite of what the conservatives say. We can do a new think tank, Michael. We don't even need to publish research papers. <laughs> just kind of look. look, and this is what Liz Truss says. We're doing the, other, we're doing the opposite. Thank you. That's our reporting. £10,000, please. And you'd be right virtually all the time. It kind of is the only explanation because, you know, there are lots of people who are you know, lots of centrists. I've even seen, I think, the, the, the guy who wrote the last Tory manifesto sort of come out and said, this is a silly policy. And what they seem to be categorizing this as, you know, this idea we shouldn't have solar farms on agricultural land is it's nimbyism. You know, it's not in my backyard. People who live in villages who are more likely to be Tory party members who like the scenes you know, of, of, of rolling fields around them and they don't want them to be covered in anything that looks remotely modern. That's, that, that's sort of the argument. This is nimbyism. Um, and they still think it should be overcome. This guy, Robert Colville. But what it's not consistent with is the opinion that Tory members seem to have on fracking. Now, I've watched a few hustings throughout this, this, this process. And one of the things that gets the biggest round of applause is when one of them says, we need to do, what well, Trust or Sunak says, we need to do more fracking. And everyone's like, Aah! it's like, if what you want is your environment to look, you know, untainted and, and traditional and beautiful, why are you okay with fracking? What, what's, the, what's the difference between fracking, which requires, you know, a lot of big machinery, and I imagine is very noisy, and solar panels. One of them is a good policy and one of them is a bad policy. That there is nothing else that divides them, right? Really bizarre. Also rewilding. If your issue is with solar panels, oh, it doesn't look natural then why are you also against rewilding? Like, how dare the government come along and try and grow forests on these fields? By the way, we don't just, you know, we don't live in a society where the, the government just says, we're taking your field, we're planting trees on it, and you're not going to get anything in return. This is the government offering to buy that land off farmers. The farmers, I think, are quite happy about it generally because, you know, farmland isn't the most valuable thing in this country. If you can install solar panels or if you can sell it to the National Trust or whoever rewilds it, that's not a bad deal. But because these are sensible policies, to become Tory leader, you have to say you're against them. I mean, there are some farmers, Michael, who are voluntarily rewilding parts of their own estate. I mean, what, what, what's Liz Trust and Rishi not going to do? They're going to stop them? They're going to send in the army? <laughs> you can't rewild your own estate? Sorry. Well, and you get these same Tories, they walk around in their bar. I've got a barber, so don't, I don't want any sort of hatred at, you know, oh, Aaron Masani, anti-barber. I've got a barber coat. Walking around with their barbers and their wellies and their flat caps and their, you know, their English pointer and their spring of Spaniel go, oh, I love the British countryside. Okay, let's have some more. Let's, let's rewild, create some new forests. Fuck you. Well, you can't love it that much then. Mm -hmm.